Hello everyone. We have looked at what genes are, we have looked at how they work, and we have looked at how nature changes genes. But now it's time to look at how humans have learned to change genetic information, and that is by cloning and genetic engineering. And we're going to start by looking at cloning. So what exactly is cloning? Well, a clone is an organism that is genetically identical to another organism due to some process. So we've been able to clone plants for many years by taking cuttings and growing these into new plants and they put down new roots and they are just like any other plant, but they are a clone. However, the same is not true with animals. So just to warn you, if you cut your finger off, then you can't use that finger to grow another you. And you can't grow that finger back. So do not try this experiment. So natural cloning in plants most often. Potato plants produce in this way. You see the eyes on a potato, the little sprouting bits. They can grow into tubers, which are other potatoes but you can also grow a new plant from that. So potatoes, or at least all those in a localized area, are likely to be clones of each other. So plants have been cloning themselves for millions of years, but we have now got into it. We've talked about taking cuttings, which we have known about for a long time, but tissue culture is another way to propagate plants. To take tissue culture, we take cells, not cuttings, but a small number of cells from the parent plant, and we grow them in a special medium, a kind of gel which is rich in growth hormones and nutrients. So let's just go through plant cloning again. We can take a few cells from a plant and put them in a container of agar jelly, which is the nutrient that's often used. And you add special plant hormones called auxins, and these are added to promote mitosis. And once you've got that going on, you can start to form sort of microstructures. As you can see in the picture, there are tiny little leaflets starting to form as these cells grow into collections of plant tissue, not just cells, but actual constructed plant tissue. And we continue that process and eventually we have plantlets that we can transfer into a normal compost mix and they will develop a normal root structure and eventually they will be just like any other plant. So let's just think about the impact of these kinds of technologies. So what is the benefit of plant cloning? Why is it worth doing? Well, we actually said before, if we wanted more plants in the past, we needed to collect seeds, but this way we can grow large numbers of new plants very, very quickly. And we can take just a few cells and grow them into and a full plant which can provide fruit or other kinds of food or fuel. So genetic techniques which come somewhere in the middle of the cloning process mean that we can get new traits into different plants, better disease resistance, faster growth cycles and crops that can find a larger range of soils to be suitable for them to grow. So all of these effects produce higher production and commercially speaking, higher production means higher profits. And this is what drives a lot of the search for new kinds of genetic techniques to apply to not just plants, but animals too. And the influence of profit on science is a whole nother subject which we won't get into now, but you might tell by my tone that it's not one that I'm particularly enthusiastic about. So the advantages of tissue culture are that we can grow a lot of new plants quickly and in a small space. 
We can control the conditions so we can always make sure we have the best chance of developing our plants, but this is true at any stage, not just at tissue culture. And all of our plants are genetically identical, so we can be sure that they will have the qualities that we wanted to keep from the parent plant. However, there are disadvantages of tissue culture, of course. All the plants being genetically identical means we will keep all of the things we want, but they will also have the same weaknesses to disease. And worse still, there is no possibility of new mutations arising to fight those diseases or to gain any other beneficial effect. If our plants are cloned, they will always be genetically identical because no reproduction, no blending of genes has taken place. And the gene pool could in fact shrink that way. The total number of available genes could be reduced because DNA can be damaged over time and it's possible to lose genetic information. So we've looked at artificial plant cloning, now let's look at artificial animal cloning. So we have a fairly good understanding of genetics now as humans. I say fairly good, there are many things we do not understand yet. We are able to create clones now of not just plants, but animals too. So the first and possibly most famous example of animal cloning is Dolly the sheep, born in the UK in 1996 using a technique called cell transferring. And there you are, you can see her there in all her glory. This is after she was dead, of course. Those are her taxidermied remains. So, how do you create an animal like Dolly? Well, it's a process called cell nuclear transferal. What do you do? First, you take the egg cell from an adult animal that you want to clone, and the nucleus of that egg cell is removed. The gamete information is discarded. Then you take another nucleus from another animal, and this will be a diploid nucleus with a complete set of genetic information, and you put that nucleus, the donor nucleus, into the empty egg cell. And the egg cell will activate the nucleus to become pluripotent. It will become a stem cell, and this cell can now develop normally using the donated DNA as if it was a newly fertilized egg. And so while the embryo is still made out of stem cells, it's implanted into the mother sheep where we got the original egg. And if all goes well, it will develop normally and a new sheep will be born. But that will be a clone of not the mother, but the other animal we took the genetic information from. So how do you clone a sheep? Let's review that visually. First, take two sheep. Sheep A and sheep B in this case. So we're going to take a somatic cell from the first sheep and we're going to take a gamete with only half of the genetic information from the second sheep, sheep B. So we're going to remove the nucleus from sheep A and we're going to save the egg cell from sheep B, but discard the nucleus. And we're going to put them together. And once we've done that, we're going to allow it to develop, but we're going to basically insert the embryo that we grow into sheep B when we reach the end of the pregnancy, we will find that the offspring, sheep C, will be a clone of sheep A. And we say if the implanted zygote grows, because this is not always successful. So the advantages that we have of cell transferring the DNA sequence can be checked before we put it into the new mother animal. We have more freedom to choose genetic traits than by the earlier methods of breeding animals together. And we can also use cell transferal to save endangered species because if the endangered species has a cousin, a similar animal, then mothers of that cousin species may be able to bear the children of the endangered species by carrying the young of other species. 
there are some disadvantages of cell transferal, of course. We are going to lose the chance for mutations. Again, there is no way to get new genetic traits that may be beneficial, in fact, more beneficial than the ones we are trying to keep. There is a lack of hybrid vigor. So this is also due to the possibility of losing genes or genetic damage over the process of many cloning cycles and animals that are cloned are potentially more vulnerable to disease if there is any damage to the DNA there's no way it can be corrected so as we also said before some genes can be lost and this can reduce the gene pool over time so the whole species or at least that cloned line of the species may be weaker as a result and as we said before, nuclear transfer actually has quite a low success rate compared to the number of cells that we must prepare in order to attempt it. So some scientists, including the creator of Dolly, the man who originally cloned Dolly the sheep, have abandoned nuclear transfer. They have stopped using it as a way to create cloned cells. And in fact, in 2012, there's a Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine awarded to Shinya Yamanaka and John Gurdon for their discovery that you can actually create stem cells from somatic cells, from body cells. You can reprogram them to be stem cells. So we've talked about them a little before, but we keep mentioning them here, stem cells. Let's just review what they are. They are pluripotent cells. They have many abilities. They are multi-skilled in a way, which means in the biological sense, they are able to turn into any kind of cell. So a human stem cell will always turn into a human cell, but it will be able to turn into any kind of human cell bone, liver, skin, heart, anything. So stem cells are found mostly in embryos at the early stages of development and so we can remove stem cells from human embryos when they are just a few days old. But they can also be created as we saw when a somatic nucleus is inserted into an egg cell for nuclear transfer. And Yamanaka showed that it's possible to reprogram the nucleus and reset a cell, a somatic cell, from the body of an animal into its pluripotent state. So we keep talking about them, so why are stem cells such a big freaking deal already? So they can become any kind of cell. This has massive potential in medicine. So we could, for example, make new brain cells. We could rebuild bones. Immune systems, maybe you've heard of AIDS, a disease for which we do not currently have a cure. Well, we might be able to repair damaged immune systems with them. I don't know of any attempts to cure AIDS this way, but that is an immune disease. We could also grow new organs, and I mean literally grow a new heart. So at the moment we have heart transplants, we can take hearts from people and give them to other people, which is already pretty awesome. With this, we could literally grow new organs. And if all that wasn't cool enough for you, moving away from stem cells a little, but scientists are now working on how to 3D print these parts. This is why stem cells are such a big freaking deal already. <laughs> so we just talked about it a little when we talked about growing new organs, but therapeutic cloning is the official name for that process. So if you get a heart from another person, or even if you receive treatment from someone else's stem cells, then your immune system will see those cells as foreign. It will know that they are not part of your body and anything that is not part of your body is prone to being rejected and dying. And if you take a heart from someone else, you usually have to spend the rest of your life taking anti-rejection drugs in order to stop your immune system from rejecting the heart that you've been given. And 
this often damages your immune system in other ways. We can take your genome and create new stem cells from you, then we can custom make parts for you. We can clone one of your cells to produce an embryo and then harvest those stem cells to make whatever we need. This is the idea of therapeutic cloning. So here are some pretty big questions and they're big so I've put them in bold face just to give them a little extra weight. So is human cloning playing with nature? Is that a bad thing? We can understand the genome well enough to change it. Why shouldn't we do that? And if we do create human clones, we haven't yet cloned human people, but we have cloned human stem cells and started to investigate how we can make them into other types of human tissue. With that in mind, who has the right to have children? No matter how you create them, sometimes people who might not be able to have children naturally want to create a child and they take an egg and a sperm and they put them together artificially. Is this all right to do? What about if we want to change the genome a little? Maybe I want to have a blue-eyed baby. How are we going to make sure that we have a blue-eyed baby? What if two men or two women want to have a child that is a genetic blend of them, taking 23 chromosomes from each of them and making an embryo as if they had done it the natural way? <clears throat> while we're doing all of this creating of stem cells, is that right? Is it okay to create viable human embryos, so an embryo that can actually grow into another human, and then instead we just harvest it for stem cells? Is that okay? If we have technically got a new life, is it okay to just take those stem cells and use them to protect an older life? Hmm. And the biggest question of all, perhaps, is what shouldn't we do with genetic modification? Either cloning or, as we're about to see, genetic engineering. Is there anything that you feel we just should not do? Any way that we should not change the species? Say that we could make people genetically better at sports. We could make them super sportsmen. Say that we could improve our eyesight or hearing to be like some of the animals that we know or say that we could increase our lifespan to over 200 years. Is it all right to do that if it means changing the genome of the entire species or a part of the species? And if we're doing that, should we do it to everyone or just the people who can afford to pay for it? Hmm. So at that point we are finished talking about cloning and so there we will leave it for now. In the next part we're going to look at the other part of the topic which is genetic engineering.